Today is the day, guys. Today is going to be a very, very difficult day. Um, fortunately for us, we have a lot of work to do this morning and today. Anyway, the kids slept with Polar downstairs last night in the basement and uh, kind of had a, a last sleepover with him. And um, as I was laying there last night in bed, I was just thinking, like, when you have a puppy and you bring it into your life and they're kind of a pain because they chew stuff up and they do all these things, but they bring so much joy and happiness and fun. Well, and then, and then they just become part of your family. And then over the years, you know, they have these different events that happen that the dog's part of, all the camping, all the outdoor stuff in the backyard and the kids playing and every picture in the backyard and every video that we've had, like includes the, the, the animal, uh, included Polar. And so it's gonna be hard not seeing that. Um, uh, I know today's gonna be difficult, but it's, it's days after that are gonna be difficult. And then I thought, you know, it's like losing family members, which we all do on a regular basis, and it's just so hard. It's, it's something that just, um, some of you have probably already gone through it um, recently, or maybe you're going through right now. It's just it's something that we have to go through. And I thought, why do we have to go through this? This is, this is something that is uh, inevitable, which means it's absolutely going to happen in this life here on this earth. And I thought, why do we have to go through this? Why, why, why? Um, it's because it's supposed to be that way. We're supposed to understand that we came here for a reason and we're here for a reason, but we also have to go and we can't be here forever. And nothing lasts and remains forever, um, except for those relationships that we build, except for those memories that we make, those last forever. And so we have those memories with Polar, we have those memories and we have that relationship and, and those are the things that aren't going to be going away. And so anyway, just thinking about that last night, I was, I was Anyway, I'm sure a lot of you had the same questions where you're just like, why does this have to happen? It's part of life. We, I think we have to, you know, we have to feel this sorrow. We have to feel this pain so we can understand, we can understand what joy is. We can understand the opposite of, and so we can make a decision each day to just get up and go and, and uh, keep working through life. Because the harder we work, the better things are um, in terms of, um, in, with our relationships and everything in life. So anyway, I'm going to go wake the kids up. Uh, it's... it's it's time for them to get up and we'll see how Polar did. Oh, Charlie's down here too, huh? Charlie's a poof. How did we sleep, guys? Good. Everybody's good. Hi, buddy. Good morning, Papa Paul. Can you go outside? Look at this poor guy going up the stairs. You can do it, buddy. Come on. See that? That right there is why we have to do what we have to do. Poor guy. I'm going to help him. We got Polar out and got him. Um, down the stairs and he immediately just laid right down He's too tired getting up those stairs and then coming down these three three four steps it's Just too much for him. Come buddy. It's all right. He's just tired Just tired. Come here. You want to go get in the car? So I was just looking out in the backyard a minute ago watching polar and thinking you know what he's He's looking better. He's jumping up really fast and he just looks more healthy. And, and then he decided not to go the direction he was going to go and he decided to go back and lay back down and he just kind of fell on the lawn. So I'm like, okay, we'll do this. But I am, honestly, I'm not, I'm angry right now. I'm like trying to get over it, but I'm just angry. And we're sitting in the driveway, literally sitting in our driveway, running late. Not running late, we sat in the car we got in the car on time, but we're just sitting here, and because this is Polar's last, this is him leaving, and it's hard. It's, it's the little kids don't really know what's going on. They, they still are just kind of doing what they normally do, but it's just hard. I don't like that we have to make this decision. I'm actually quite angry about it right now. Polar, I love you. One of the memories I really liked with Polar was sleeping on the trampoline outside in the summertime we would always sleep on the trampoline outside we would always sleep on the trampoline outside and i really liked it when polar and charlie were both there and we would sleep on the tramp trampoline that's the same thing with me really mm -hmm. another thing I, and one thing i really like about polar is just like he's super sweet one thing i like about polar um is he can be with us all the time. Even when he dies, he can still be with us. What I like about Polar is that he is super like calm, and so when you're 
like sleeping with him, he won't like be crazy and he'll... Unlike Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> Charlie's crazy. The reason we're taking Puller down to my dad's farm instead of having him at our house is the farm is our happy place. It's been in our family longer than we've been a family. And it's just a place that we love to go and play and be peaceful and be together as a family. And so we want to pull up there. We're supposed to be meeting the vet at, uh, at the farm at 3.30. Well, it's 3.35 and we've been stuck in traffic for a while. And I, when I say stuck, I mean, look at this. We just sit here and wait. Hopefully the vet's late. I know. Or doesn't mind that we're late. It doesn't, yeah. We're just stopped. They're just, they're just a stop sign if they're holding everyone back. Anyway, um, I've been sitting here thinking about Polar, some of my favorite memories of Polar. Um, Branson's asleep. But he, anyway, we were camping one time with the scouts, and we had a box of wood that we brought, and the box was just a small box. But anyway. I was just sitting there thinking about that because it was starting to get cold and Polar didn't want to sit on the cement that we were standing on when we were camping uh, around the fire and he didn't want to get close to the fire either. Well, we look over and he's trying to climb inside the box. Like he literally has all four legs and his bum sitting in the box and all of a sudden, as soon as we looked over, the box broke open and anyway, Polar trying to get inside the box. And then um, another one of my favorite memories is just the way Polar was. This kind of explains the way Polar really was in terms of our family dog, is we slept outside, all of us decided to sleep outside. He slept on the trampoline with the kids, and Sarah, actually, she said that she would sleep out there with us too. Well, she... <laughs> <laughs> I got bugs up my nose. She started, the bugs were really bothering her, and so she went in, and um, and then a few hours later, I heard something out front. It was like a, a noise out front, and, I, and Polar immediately jumped up from where he was laying with the kids, and he ran to the front gate, to the side gate of the house, sniffed underneath of it, did a little bark, and then he went from there and he started sniffing around the, where the, he heard the noise, and then he came back and went around the perimeter of the yard, went to the other gate, checked things out, came back, sniffed each one of the kids' heads, and then came over and sniffed my head just to make sure everybody was okay, and then he went back and laid down with the kids. And uh, that's pretty much what Polar was. He was just, that's that's his job. That's I think that's the, the thing I'm having the, the hardest time with is, is him. This is his job. We're releasing him from his job and that's hard. Because he believes that his job is to protect us. And he's done such a good job. But now he's just so old and and he just won't let go. And I think it's because he, he believes that he still needs to stay here and protect us. So anyway, those are some of my favorite memories of Polar. Some of my favorite memories of about Polar, um, like Johnny said, Polar would always make sure that everyone in the yard was safe. If the kids would go outside to play, he would stay right next to them and he'd always sniff them, then walk around the perim perimeter, sniff them, and once he did that a couple times and he knew they were safe, he would lay down in the shade and just watch them play. Um, another one of my favorite memories is just the day that we got Polar. Our other dog had died in the night and I had to tell Branson when he got home from school that she had died and he was just so heartbroken and Johnny called me and said, one of my buddies just, and my buddies has puppies. They're only five weeks old so we wouldn't be able to get one for a week and I was like, uh, I don't know if we want to get another dog right away. We'll talk about it later and then that night Johnny was late coming home from work and he walked in and he had this cute little white fluffy little puppy and it made the heartache of the day just disappear with the, the love of that puppy. Did you guys know that Polar went to, was stolen from our, our house and taken to Las Vegas, which was for us like six or seven hours away? Stolen from our yard and we actually got him back after a month. Mm -hmm. And then they offered us $4,000 for him. Polar's had a crazy life. He broke his hip when he was a puppy, jumped out of the backside of my brother's truck and broke his hip. And that was just young. He was only a couple months old. He's had a crazy life. He's been ice fishing a ton of times, fishing. He was just like, he, up until he couldn't run or anything like that, he was always going outdoors with us everywhere. He went everywhere with us camping and fishing. Okay guys, we are at the farm now. This is, this is the hard part 
Let's get out. The vet is here waiting for us. Charlie's like, yes. Good boy, Charlie. Oh, Charlie's like, immediately. Charlie. Like, this place is new. Charlie, come here. It's, like, it's the farm. It's the farm. <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll just let Polar wander around a little bit. We'll see what the vet wants to do from that point. And he's already getting tired. Polar's already just kind of by wandering. He thought he was going to be able to run around, but he's not. He's not going to be able to. Polar. Hey, buddy. Polar. Hey, buddy. So when we pulled in, I realized that this is the first time in two and a half years that I've been to the family farm. I wasn't here for a couple months before the mission, and it's been about two months since I've been home. So it's been about, yeah, a little over two and a half years, which is, I love this place so much. And this was one of the places that I really, really missed when I was on my mission because um, during the summers before I would come down and help with the yard, I'd help clean up, I'd help fix anything that was broken. So, yeah, two and a half years since I've been here. It's really good to be back, but not the day. <laughs> not today to be back. So we brought this blanket so that we can lay Polar on it, and then um, we plan to actually bury him in it as well so we don't have to mess with his body or anything afterwards, so. I know this might sound a little bit creepy, a lot of, like, I don't know, morbid almost? Talking about like body and all that stuff, but it's part of life. This is this is really this is a part of life. It's a hard part of life, but it is a part of life. And so, what do you guys think about right here? This is is this a good spot? This is going to be quick and simple. We just talked to the vet. She's just going to give him one shot. We're not going to show you the shot, so don't worry about that. Just give him one shot, and then he's going to go to sleep, and and uh, he won't really feel anything, which is good. Say bipolar. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You're such a good dog. Why don't you guys go around and find some big rocks that you can put on top of where Puller's buried. Do you want to do that? Go look around and find some big rocks, okay? Okay. And then we'll remember where Puller's at, okay? It's a butterfly. Oh, cool, let's see. Whoa, how'd you catch that? Whoa. I don't know. Bye, butterfly. That was Puller's spirit telling you he's happy. Oh. We'll come back and see him again soon, okay? 
Should we maybe say a prayer, guys? Yeah. yeah. Wanna do that? Say a prayer. I was gonna say. from me. What's your favorite thing about Polar? Or best memory? What I love about Polar is he is very, very loyal. He was always making sure we were okay and everyone was there and he would put us before himself, make sure before. He was pleased that everyone else was. And then one of my favorite memories is when he would always come and sleep in our room with us. One of my favorite memories, what I just barely thought of is when I was little one day, because I'd go outside like every single day and I'd stay there and then I'd eat dinner and then go back outside. And one day it was raining super hard and I liked the rain and I was like soaking wet and Polar like came out from under the porch and even though he didn't like thunder or anything, I was sitting against the wall and I was just like soaking wet and getting rained on. And he came and just sat with me and we just sat there in the rain. And yeah, that's one of the memories <laughs> that I love. We love Polar. It's only been, I don't know, a couple hours. And I miss him a lot. I keep expecting to look outside and see him, but he's not there. Mm -hmm. But we still love him. It's been kind of a rough day, but we know that he is healthier and he's happier and he's not in pain anymore, which is a good thing. Even though it's sad, it's best for him. With you guys, if you have something, everyone goes through something that's hard and difficult and rough. But my advice to you is don't hide your emotions. Show them, don't bundle them up because eventually they will explode and it's not fun to explode. So share your emotions. People can help you and people will be there for you to help make it less difficult or to push through the difficult thing. We love you guys. And as always, you, you are, are worth it. it. Bye guys. Good night guys. Yes, I believe.